Switch on the crowd, a massive basket. Three, you are kidding me. And the fire burn brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. Perth takes on Melbourne less than a week after the Lynx brought an end to the Boomers' undefeated run to start this Signet WNBL season. This next instalment takes place on Perth's home court tonight in a tantalising matchup for Thursday Night Hoops. Jess Webster with you in commentary alongside Mark Alabakov. Great to have you here, Mark. And the good news for us is we don't have to wait long to see these two great teams go head-to-head -to -head tonight. It's going to be a great battle to watch. Well, I anticipate a great rematch. We get Jordan Canada versus Ari McDonald too. We get two top four teams going at it in a finals-esque atmosphere. I mean, you've got two teams that are likely to be there at the business end of the season. They get to play each other twice in five days, likely in this uh, second game in the series with some adjustments made. Now, Perth, they have won the last two against Melbourne, but they haven't recorded a home win against Melbourne since December 2019. So that no doubt they would love to get a win against the Boomers on their home court. But how much confidence do you think they would have gained from Sunday's win? Oh, plenty. I think getting that second half monkey off their back where they had their two previous losses um, you know, in second half fade outs, they were able to address that weather and Melbourne Boomers storm and then be able to storm home essentially themselves in that fourth quarter to beat the previously undefeated team. And let's uh, take that trip down memory lane and check out some of the highlights from Sunday's match uh, here in Melbourne. And as you touched on, it was a game of momentum swings and that would be probably what would be one of the most pleasing things about it from a Perth perspective is having to withstand a charge from the Boomers, particularly in that third quarter, to come home with a really strong win. And uh, some really great performances from, from key players as well. There was, there was individual performances. There was great team performances. So much to love. Do you think we might get the, a bit of the same tonight? Well, I think so. And, uh, you know, Perth was able to show their medal and show that uh, they're not just a, a one or two horse race. So there was a clear focus defensively on trying to curb Erie McDonald and Amy Atwell's three-point shooting, but then you saw the likes of Mila Goodchild, Emily Potter getting off the chain uh, on the offensive end, and then Maley closing it out when it was winning time. And as we take a look at the ladder, as we can see that the Boomers were the last team undefeated, so everyone's had a loss uh, this season, but things are really starting to tie it up, particularly in that uh, top four space as we head to the, towards the halfway mark of the season, and uh, these games are just absolutely worth their weight in gold. Well, every win obviously keeps you separated from you know that fifth and sixth and seventh teams that are obviously strong to try and make that finals picture but with two top four teams uh, you know I anticipate these two being there in the business and this particular match is worth two wins to Perth because this would close out a head-to-head -head, uh, should the two teams fall on the same wins and losses at the end of the season so for the Melbourne Boomers this is one they've got to get back to try and be able to get the ascendancy in the season series uh, in the third rubber match later this season so a lot of uh, subplots for us tonight let's uh, spend a little bit more time on Perth and what's uh, really stood out uh, from my perspective, their regular starting five this season. McDonald, Goodchild, Atwell, Maley and Potter all averaging 12 or more points this season. What are your observations about the way they're playing their basketball? Well, they know who they are. So they've embraced this high octane style, this seven seconds or less, trying to get the ball down the floor quickly uh, with reaction time advantages, get themselves on the point of the rim, high percentage shots, positions to where they might get fouled. And then when the defense converges, they've got shooters everywhere on the floor. So you saw you know, the focus of trying to curb uh, Aaron McDonald and Amy Atwell had um, good child and Potter you know, be able to carry some scoring load, but then also playmaking ability as well, which is really, really important to get others involved in the game. Um, and then Maley, when it was winning time, it was obviously you know, incredible, was knocking down shots from almost quarter court when, uh, you know, with a hand in her face and, and sometimes on a ball reversal. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Three th last quarter threes as well among her 17 uh, points and uh, 17 rebounds, if you don't mind, um, for Annalie Maley. From a Melbourne perspective, their 63 points on Sunday against Perth was the lowest they've scored this season. 
what are you expecting from them tonight? Do you think that they will try and mix things up a little bit, or do you like the way that their system and their structure is just about doing it for four quarters? I mean, I think it's both of those things. You don't suddenly forget how to win games. Um, so, you know, they're going to be able to leverage that experience from the start of the season. So still leaning on their possession players, something that is going to be important to them. They... Yeah, they gain back missed shots at a rate of 36%, but they're going to need to find some answers in, in being able to stop the, the free-flowing play that Perth likes to play with. And looking forward to this contest tonight and make sure you download the official WNBL app. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. So for all your live scores, your highlights, all your player and team info and plenty more, make sure you download the free WNBL app today. And we are underway in Perth. It is the Lynx taking on the Boomers on Thursday Night Hoops and Melbourne to have their first opportunity as they immediately go inside. And a lovely finish there from Hillman to get us underway. And Perth in a 2-3 zone to start. So already employing a defense that's going to bait the Melbourne Boomers into shooting from the perimeter. And they didn't take the bait. So the Lynx... And they've coughed it up. So an early opportunity here for the Boomers. They want to get off to a good start tonight. Losing their first game of the season against Perth on Sunday after what was a, a dominating start to the Signet WNBL season. And a smart focus early on by the Boomers. So, you know, I was able to call the, the first game in this series and I talked about their shot selection and the, the perimeter shooting being something that led into Perth's you know, tempo of game that they like to play with. Already they're trying to go inside. Here is another opportunity. One off the rim from Rochi. But they'll get another opportunity. Frolling, working her way on the baseline. Kicks it out to Canada. An early look for three and drains it. And that came off the back of some post touches. So when the ball gets into the keyway, then the Perth defenders have to converge. McDonald charging down the other end. She's been denied. That was a fast break down the other end as we take another look on replay. McDonald. That one's off the rim. So this is a promising start from the Boomers. Yeah, it's the tempo that they want the game to be played at. And we've already got Keely Froling, who had 10 offensive rebounds in the first hit out. Has had two times where she's gotten her hand to the ball and knocked it to a teammate's advantage. It's a shot up there, but it is offline. 5-0 in the early stages of this opening quarter in Perth. Atwell with an opportunity against Blitzarms. Draws contact. This will be great for Amy. So being able to draw contact on the taller Blitzards in that particular play. So she went one of 12 the last time that these two teams played, which is out of character. Had a, a number of shots just rim out. So for her to be able to get on the free throw line, hopefully put two away for her team, that'll get her mojo back. That's the important first one, and the Lynx are on the board tonight. Great start to Amy Atwell. Yeah. Rolling. Foul is called. So Perth deploying after a set of free throws, that 1-2-2 two, two half court trap. So that's designed to try to break the rhythm of the Melbourne Boomers, delay the, their ability to enter the ball into whatever it is the, the offensive pattern is that they're trying to run. We see Goodchild heading to the bench. Blitzarm swings it across to Canada. Now into Frolling. Was incredible on the offensive rebounds last week. She was shot, misses. Now a chance down the other end. Atwell. And it's, it's a turnover. Double dribble, a little mishandle there by Amy Atwell, but I like the aggressiveness that she's coming to play with. And for a shooter like her, someone that's a, a world-class three-point shooter, being able to see the ball go through the net, just on that set of free throws, she's got a, a more aggressive mindset in everything she's doing as a result. Canada for Blitzarves early. Look for a three. So dispelling that early three-point shooting series of woes that they had in the first hit out, they've knocked down two now. Potter. 
can she do top of the arc? And a repeat opportunity as Maley mops things up. And credit to uh, Chibatoni there being able to get her hand to the ball and knock it to Maley's advantage. Rolling Canada offline. Maley with the rebound. Rowling's calling for a travel. It will be a foul. Having a bit of a chat about it. Be a Melbourne ball, it appears. Get a look at this last shot. As you mentioned, yes, a really smart hand in there. And that's the veteran experience of Alex Chibatoni. Another look for a three early from Melbourne. And they'll get it back. And Hillman converts. And that'll be huge for her confidence too. So she went from being the player of the round to probably playing you know, less than her best the last time these two teams faced off against one another. So getting an early bucket for her too, you know, will get her mojo going. Seven points and 15 rebounds last week for Naz Hillman. So we see another turnover from Perth and Boomers on top early. Canada open for three up short and there's a long rebound that Perth wants to run off the back of wide open for the three is Annalie Maley it bubbles out a couple of opportunities gone begging for Perth Froling sees her opportunity that one's also off the rim Chipper Tony with the rebound off to Atwell 10-4 early lead to the Boomers McDonald Charging. Has a couple to beat. Chibatoni inside for Potter. Can't get it to drop. As they tackle each other to the to the court. Not sure what sport they're trying to play. And we'll get a jump ball. Two of the league's best rebounders in a contest. That's bound to happen. But I mean, if you look at that last possession, there's a, a clear focus again in, in trying to get the ball out of Ari McDonald's hands, force somebody else to have to play make for the Perth Lynx. That seems to be the tact by the Boomers. McDonald to inbound. Potter. Trying to just. Come on, Stark. A foul on the play there with Potter trying to beat um, Naz Hillman off the dribble. So this is probably out of character, but with the defender playing so close to your body, you get a, an advantage with either stepping your leg through and past, um, or, you know, probably with a, a crossover steps so or stepping across your body so that you can keep the basketball protected, or a spin dribble is usually what will be used in that particular moment as well. Atwell looking for Potter working the baseline and has turned it over to Blitzarves. Five and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Hillman, get it back. Now to Rocci. Swing it across. Blitzarves. That's a great long range, too. Now, she knocks down that shot, but those were the shot types that were leading to long rebounds at Perth. Uh, we were able to get the game on their rhythm by playing at a tempo off the back of rebounding those types of misses. So she knocks it down, but it's a cautionary tale. Canada. Blitz arms again. Makes a move. Can't get it to drop. And this is what they want. McDonald charging down the other end and draws contact. And the pace that they play with, the spacing that they play with also. So you had Atwell on one wing and I believe it was Chibatoni on the opposite. You know, their defenders are baited to come and try and blow up this drive from Ari McDonald. So she has the choice to wear the contact and try to score or um, off one bounce be able to kick the ball out to a capable three-point shooter for a wide open three-point look. Gets the first. So Boomer's having an offensive focus that is trying to get the ball back inside for the most part. They've started to go a little bit perimeter heavy in this last couple of minutes. And there's an adjustment from the Lynx. If you watch all of the Lynx defenders off the ball, they're all sagging off towards the painted area. 
Good ball inside for Hillman. Tough shot. That was a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> but in the past three possessions, they're trying to shrink space around the key area and encourage the Boomers to pass it out and shoot from the perimeter. Yes, but Clinch Boycard, the first points of the evening. Rolling. Atwell got a hand in there. The substitution of Tara Reid on the floor, she's got to come and bring some scoring. She's a, a great three-point shooter. She's actually their highest uh, three-point shooter in terms of percentage. So if she can get off the hook a little bit, it'll be really helpful for their game. Turnover. Chipitoni at well. Perth ball. Probably unlucky not to get a foul call there. It looked like she copped a bit of a hit to the side of the head. See that on replay, you're right, Mark. The bun definitely moved. <laughs> Here is that well looking inside. Mitchell Card has a few to beat, kicks it out. Open look for Mailey. Can't get it to drop. Rochi. Get it back. Canada. Oh, and that has coughed it up. And McDonald v Canada down the other end. McDonald will get it back, and this time gets a couple. She's just box office right now. The level of basketball that she's playing to be a creator and then get back in and make a hustle effort. Early MVP candidate for mine. Six point lead to Melbourne. Just over three minutes to go in this opening quarter. It's another look for three. Another rebound to Perth. Mailey, clinch hoy card. Lovely pass inside for Atwell. Draws the foul. I really like that adjustment too, to being able to go to the rim off the dribble, but then off a, a cutting action here from Amy Atwell. So she got a lot of attention in the first game. Um, every time she caught the ball out on the three-point line, there was a purple jersey and a high hand trying to dispel the three-point shot. And it bothered her into uh, that one of 12 shooting night that she had. Here, her aggressive and being able to counter that, I mean, it's difficult to, to play people tightly on the perimeter, but then be with them when they're going off the bounce or cutting to the rim. You can't be in both places at once. I mean, we did say this would be a game of adjustments. And Amy Atwell shooting at nearly 95% from the free throw line so far this season. And has drawn the margin back to four. So important last couple of minutes here. The Boomers with the advantage in the first quarter. Perth ball. They've lifted. And they're doing a great job of containing dribble penetration, staying in front of the person that's driving, and that's born out of you know, testing the, the three-point shooting of the Boomers. So they hit those first two um, early in the quarter, but then they've gone on a little bit of a cold streak since then, so the respect for the three-point shot is less. You can play the driving lane a whole lot more if you're Perth. Quarter misses, Frolling cleans things up. So look at the gap that they give the ball handler and they're able to stay in front of Keely Froling, who's not an easy person to defend. So even when she has that turn of pace, you've given yourself a, a one meter cushion and almost a head start in being able to beat her to a spot on the court. Here is Ari McDonald out to clinch Hoycard, loves it from this position. It's off the rim, but they get the rebound through Potter. And adds a couple more to her tally. Two points of difference. A late run here from Perth is Canada. Kiki Davidson through her fingertips in Perth ball. We've had three fruitless possessions in a row for the Melbourne Boomers. So this would be an opportunity to either call a diagram play, whatever it is that um, coach Chris Lucas feels like the team has some comfort running and can get some scoring looks out of. You want to try to settle the ship here. Less than two minutes to play McDonald. Superb. Just such a delight to watch. And so balanced too. So she's able to go from fast to stop and then have total control of her body to elevate and shoot under control. Another turnover from the Boomers. Perth down the other end and Maley makes them pay. 
smart timeout by coach Chris Lucas to try and stem some of the bleeding here. And, and it's all born out of um, the shot selection, which is it's the first game all over again. So this timeout is brought to you by Signet, Australia's number one digital accessories brand. Signet continues to power the WNBL Australian owned and designed. Signet is available at JB Hi-Fi, Officeworks and other leading retailers. Make sure you fig uh, visit Signet.com today. So after the Boomers got out to a six point advantage during that first quarter, all of a sudden the Lynx have had a run and they lead by two points with a minute and 28 left on the clock. It'd be pleasing uh, if you are a Perth fan that they've managed to come back in this first quarter and hit the advantage late. And uh, for the Boomers, I mean, they started so promisingly and really had the match on their terms and have just got caught out a couple of times in the last few minutes. Yeah, they have. And, you know, their early response was to try to play through uh, the low post and then the high post around that elbow region. So getting the ball in and around the key to create advantages from that point. So when it came inside, we had a, a high low pass for a score. We had the ball go inside and then out. So you had more time and space for those three point shooters to be able to shoot with less defensive pressure around them. And they knocked the first two down, but then they're baited to continue to shoot from the perimeter without creating the advantage prior, I think. And, and this is what's been able to turn the game or the rhythm of the game, I should say, in the Perth Lynx's favor. So McDonald already up to six points for Perth. Hillman up to six for the Boomers. The leading scorers so far tonight is Conti. This is. But case in point, another perimeter shot without the ball going in the paint first. And then a transition score. And Chipitoni capitalizes. It's a smart game plan from Perth, but the next counter move has got to come from Melbourne Boomers. So what do they need to do to, to counteract that? Because at the moment, as you mentioned, Perth have they have the strategy and it's working. Yeah, there's probably two things. So, I mean, you always want to try and push the ball back uh, against a team that wants to play fast. So anytime that the Perth Lynx miss a shot, just like you saw the previous score with Tara Reid getting on the end of a layup, can you force Perth to expend energy one way offensively and then have to try to find the energy to defend back the other way? Or can you get the ball into the keyway here in the half court prior to it going out? And they were pressured and they've turned it over. Perth really lifting, and the buckets are starting to float. So there needs to be a solution here from the Boomers. So watch the Perth defenders. So as I alluded to earlier, now especially with Jordan Canada having the ball, all of the Perth defenders will converge on the paint. So foul call there, but they want to try and get in the road and blow up any of those keyway dribble penetrations, keyway uh, post catches, and. They're almost saying, like, hey, Melbourne, shoot from the perimeter if you want to because we're going to grab a long rebound and try and run it and play the game at our tempo. And I guess on that tempo, it's been a high octane first quarter. Who do you think that suits in the long run? I mean, absolutely Perth. And, I mean, they're built for this style. So, you know, fitness won't be an issue, especially in the case of Ari McDonald. Uh, she's a, a literal iron woman. Um, her ability <laughs> to produce at a high level for long stints, world-class stuff. So a barnstorming start to this contest. It is the Lynx who lead the Boomers 22-17 at quarter time from the Bendat Basketball Centre in Perth. Don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break and we'll come back with the second quarter shortly. Pathway in basketball? She Hoops Leadership and Confidence Scholarship can help. 
We're offering 30 girls from around Australia the opportunity to develop as coaches, players and officials with mentoring from some of Australia's best basketballers and some of Australia's best coaches in breaking down barriers. If you're a girl aged 15 to 18, then this is for you. This five-month program will accelerate your development both on and off the court. Interested? Head to shehoops.com.au to apply. Quarter time, the Bendat Basketball Centre in Perth. And after the Boomers got off to a hot start, the Lynx responded with authority in the tail end of that first quarter to hit the lead at quarter time, 22 to 17. The bucket started to flow. It was high octane basketball. Mark Alabakov, uh, how do you summarise that first quarter? Well, it's eight fast break points that they had in that quarter alone. They only had eight fast break points for the entirety of the game that they beat the Boomers in earlier in um, uh, last week. Um, six second chance points and six offensive rebounds, but that comes born out of the tempo of play. Even when a shot gets challenged, it's usually difficult to defend something at tempo and then you know the, the requisite rebound on the other side. For Melbourne, trying to find that inside game that has been so fruitful for them. They haven't gotten on the free throw line as yet, so they haven't put them in posi uh, themselves in positions to be fouled. Now, credit the, the Perth defense is doing a great job of being able to pack the paint, but can they somehow find a way to, to lull the, the Perth Lynx out of the painted area, maybe with some ball reversal, um, try to get the ball in before it comes back out? So underway in the second quarter, is the Lynx with a five point advantage. Canada for Melbourne. To Hillman. That shot's off line. Malley with another rebound. And like early, that's another long two for the Boomers. Atwell. To Potter. And now good child. Has coughed it up. Here's a chance for the Boomers back the other way through Canada. In the corner. Again, as you mentioned, Mark, they just held up. Yeah, and when the Perth Lynx are playing in this type of sagging defense, they're really trying to shrink all the space around the paint. I mean, that's going to help, that big shot. But you can't stall yourself or have the ball stop because then it allows all of the Perth defenders to take up space where you're trying to attack. He's a good child. He's been fouled. So the points won't count. So we'll get another look on replay. Good child again. Atwell looking for Maley. Good defense from Reed. Now off to Canada. Sees your opportunity. That one's off the rim. Then Choi Card mops it up. Now up to Maley. Good child. Looking into Potter. Off the rim. And watch the Perth defenders here with Jordan Canada. They want to try to converge as much as possible. And then whenever there's any um, on-ball screen action, so when a, another Melbourne player comes to dislodge Canada's defender from her to find her space, Perth's scouting and, I guess, preparation for these sorts of games, you know, credit to them because they've known how dangerous she can be when she gets ahead of steam up. You'll find whoever is guarding that person screening will get in the driving lane and try and give her a gap. So bait her to shoot that pull-up two-point shot as opposed to getting you know, all the way to the rim. Averaging the 17 points per game, Jordan Canada. And you're forever in these, um, you know, arm wrestles with star players, the, the caliber of Jordan Canada, trying to force them to plan Bs and Cs. Back to one point, the margin in favor of Perth. McDonald has turned it over. Canada. Inside, and that's better from the Boomers. And that's what I was alluding to. So a miscommunication, you get a tip on the ball, and then you're going in transition back the other way. So you're forcing Perth to have to defend in defensive transition with the same you know, level of pace that they attack offensively. So Amy Atwell draws the contact. 
That last bucket from Hillman means Melbourne back in the lead. As we see that replay. And that's an addition she's made to her game uh, you know, through the off season and what you've been able to see in, in the beginnings of this Signet WNBL season, her ability to drive the ball in straight lines, but then being able to wear contact. So being able to keep her shoulder into the defender's chest without being pushed wide of that straight line position that she seeks, uh, and then being able to make the play at the end of it. So good arm wrestle unfolding here in this second quarter. Boomers with the fast start. The Lynx hit back to take the lead at quarter time. Now we're all square here in the second. Davidson. Three Anderson, seconds yes. in the key call. So probably unlucky, but have the ball, uh, follow your uh, the basketball with your eyes if you're watching the, the post feeds, all of the red singlets converge immediately. McDonald. Clinch Hoy card swings it across. Long three attempt. Now here's where they've got to go quick. Do go quick. And here's a chance for Reed. Dribbles in. Outstanding. So you get a little bit of the push vertically down the floor. So it wasn't as fast as perhaps what I would like, but the ball got kicked ahead and the ball's going to be the fastest thing down the floor. Then when it changes sides, it doesn't stop. So it got swung around to the other side where you saw Tara Reed and a closing out defender. She gets a driving lane now. They get the ball in the paint and then they get the ball on their terms. So timeout called with seven minutes and seven seconds on the clock here in this second term. And this timeout is brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops, the perfect inter introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged five to ten. Basketball Australia are launching the Ford Aussie Hoops Award for 2023. To find out more, visit aussiehoops.basketball to register. So we've seen already almost a carbon copy of the, the game on Sunday, Mark. Momentum swings already in this contest. So it was, as I mentioned, Melbourne kind of shot out of the blocks. The Perth hit back and the buckets are starting to flow. Now things are just tightened up here in the second. Yeah, they have. And you know, if you're the Melbourne Boomers, you haven't really found your flow yet, apart from that first couple of minutes um, of quarter number one in terms of the style that fits you. But we've got ourselves a, a two-point lead. So you haven't been able to panic, even though so far within this first half, the play has been on Perth's terms. Now Perth gets an opportunity to try to respond here where they had three possessions early in the quarter where it looked like they were trying to make the play that they wanted, not the one that they saw and inevitably turned the ball over. Tony going backwards to McDonald. Again, continuing her great form. Now wide open for the three. Offline. Hustle. Now, when you're the Melbourne Boomers and you're dealing with the Perth Lynx and they play a very spread floor offense, so they try to open up the keyway for cutting action or people to be able to dribble penetrate, you've got to have or bring help from somewhere when your primary defender gets beaten, and that can be really difficult to do. So if you're the Boomers, you've almost got to pick who are you going to help off of uh, and almost be like a one-player zone defender in the keyway to help and, and challenge somebody that maybe hasn't hit some three-point shots to have to hit them. Canada to Reed. Right to Kalia, who's coming to the action for the Boomers. Froling has a fumble. And a Perth ball. Unlucky mishandle, but again, the ball didn't stop. It changed sides of the floor twice, and then they were able to get the post feed that they seek. And to have the ball in Keely Froling's hands on the block there, essentially four feet from the hoop, that's a good position. Clint Choi card to Hannon, who's also into the action for Perth. Off to Atwell, who finishes. Beautiful pass and great baseline cut um, out of what's called that flex screen action that the Perth Lynx ran there. Great contest unfolding. Hope you're enjoying the contest. Thursday night hoops. Wherever you're watching on nine now. Hillman, nice finish. Strong finish too. So it looks like they're trying to go at Hannon, uh, the, the inexperienced Hannon, um, as a, a defender and force her to have to stop you know, the storied import. Um, Naz Hillman. Here is Hannon to Atwell. 
pushes off Blitzarves to clinch Hoycard, pulls the trigger on the three, can't get it to go. Now here's an opportunity if they go quick and get the ball moving to the other side. Hillman, long range two, and converts. Atwell, down the other end for three. Rolling with the rebound. Frolling drives, draws contact. Strong drive out on her left hand. That's her preferred when she goes to the basket. And she's so strong, but is long with her, her wingspan as well. So she's able to ride contact and get the ball up and away from the defender so it doesn't get obstructed. She can wear contact and be able to finish. At 11 points and 13 rebounds against Perth on Sunday. I often say when I watch the Melbourne Boomers play, both Keely Froling and Sarah Blitzarves, I would love to see them lead the league in and one baskets where they can make that shot. I think that they're capable. We've got you know, two Australian Opal caliber athletes that can make that play and then get the subsequent free throw. The Boomers out to a five point lead. Perth respond. They get a look for three. Can't make a count. Boomers just keep it alive. Canada and Froling combined. Less than five minutes to go here in this second quarter. It's come unstuck for the Boomers. Atwell charges down the other end to Chipitoni to Ma Annalie Maley. Potter, Atwell for three and drains it. There's something to seeing the ball go through the hoop, getting herself on the free throw line a bunch of times. This is the Amy Atwell that we know. Margin cut to two. Reed working the baseline out to Blitzarves and now Canada. To Hillman. She's left it behind. Perth ball at well. Canada gets a hand in there. Tempo is just lifting a little bit here. Canada, what can she manufacture? They've coughed it up. Another chance for Canada. To Hillman. To Froling. She can't convert. Maylie to McDonald. Wide open for the three. And it goes. That's a cold blooded three by Ari McDonald after a calamity of errors. I mean, that shows you the, the level of pressure that is in this ball game and the level of tension and respect that one another have for you know, each counterpart to have that ball go in disrepute back and forth and then a cold-blooded Aerie McDonald three just to ice that possession. Massive, massive shot. And we've headed to a timeout with the Lynx with their noses back in front by one point. And this timeout is brought to you by CTM Sport. CTM Sport is here to transform your team's travel experience. Leave the hassle of off-court arrangements to CTM Sport, the experts in sports travel management. Get the winning edge at ctmsport.com.au. Mark Albakov, another twist in this game. They just keep trading blows at the moment as we see some of the top scorers. Atwell up to 10, Hillman's up to 14. She's been fantastic so far for the Boomers. McDonald as well, just tracking along nicely with nine. It's been great basketball to watch. Well, twists and turns, and I anticipate there's going to be more left within the rest of this ball game. But you know, the quality of these two teams, not only the ebbs and flows in terms of the arm wrestle of the game, but between Naz Hillman and Amy Atwell, I think between the two of them combined, it was less than 10 points in game one. But both of them are quality players that can get off the chain and, and be able to put in match-winning performances in their own right. And you're seeing them lead their teams tonight so far. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. Links up by one. And it's a Melbourne ball. Rochi. Now the blitz arms, shot clock down to 10. 
Now down to five. Blitz arves, drives and converts. That's a tough finish too. Going to her left and having to turn her back essentially against the grain and make it over her head. McDonald. Looking for Potter. Knocked away. McDonald gets it back. Needs to get a shot up. Two seconds, Potter off the rim. Good defense from Melbourne. It was, and they've got the Perth Lynx a little out of sync. It looks like they're trying to seek endpoints within their offense, and it's perhaps looking or feeling a little bit inorganic. It's forcing them to cough up the basketball uh, and not play the characteristic basketball that we know and love when watching them play. And McDonald draws the foul. Yeah, when you've got Aerie McDonald that can have a turn of speed, here we go to left to right, left to right crossover, straight line drive, wear the contact and get on the free throw line. I mean, that can right all wrongs. Keep the scoreboard ticking over for the links. Just so hard to stop when McDonald is just going full tilt. Well, I don't, I don't know that you can. I, I mean, she's as good a, a point guard import as we've seen in the history of the competition. I mean, certainly as, as long as I've been a fan and involved in the league, um, but you have to somehow commit another defender to her, but without disrupting you know, the shape of your whole defense, because she's an exceptional passer of the basketball to the moment you commit a second defender to her. Leading the competition in average points per game so far this season, we've only had one import in the history of the WNBL win the league MVP. Will we see another one this season, do we think, Mark? Well, certainly trending that way. There's been some world-class basketballers who are playing in this competition this season. Ari McDonald well up there. And meanwhile, his blitz arves. Great shot. Really starting to come into this contest. And she's finding her way in a new role. It, I mean, she doesn't not have the ability to play on the perimeter, but she's far more in the perimeter now than what we've seen in years gone by. Or most recently with the Southside Flyers. Change of scenery for blitz arms this season. Davidson. That one rattles out, but Frolling with the O rebound. Blitz us for three. And she can be dangerous when she catches a hot streak. She's had the ability to put 30 plus 40 on the board uh, in games when she catches fire. And Perth respond at the other end. Buckets continuing to flow. Less than a minute to go in this second quarter as Canada to Davidson. And gets the contact. Eyes in the back of her head, Jordan Canada. That is an exceptional pass. Unlucky for Penina Davidson not to make that basket. That would have been my play of the week. I would have called it early. Look at this. Just straight over the top of her shoulder. Uh, that's vintage. The only other player I've seen be able to do that is Kelly Wilson. High praise indeed. Davidson at the line. And this is what you want if you're Melbourne. So where you can play it tempo back the other way, get the ball into the painted area, you're now in positions to be fouled, but the game stops. So you get an opportunity, had she made that, or you know, now the ball is tipped out of bounds, but even if it was Perth ball, Melbourne gets an opportunity to bring all of their defenders back, um, be able to guard in their half court without having to transition there and try and keep up with the pace of the Perth Lynx. Davidson to Canada. Boomer's up by two. Frolling. Drains another three. It's a big shot. A two for one opportunity here for Perth. If they get a quick shot, they'll have one more possession before the end of the quarter. Boomer's up by five. McDonald and heading to the line. <laughs> what game is this? This is incredible. It is body blow after body blow by two amazing teams making big shots. If you didn't see a scoreboard on the bottom of screen, you would think that this is the fourth quarter of the game. Completes the play. 30 seconds to go in this first half and what a first half it's been. Maybe perhaps the sequel will be better than the original. Great contest between these two sides on Sunday. We're seeing another unfold. Frolling. 
Makes a second opportunity count. She's really good as a multiple effort rebounder. So her feet land and she rebounds and goes again. Oof. <laughs> that from McDonald rattles out as we reach half time in what has been a thrilling contest so far between Perth and the Boomers. The Melbourne Boomers with a four point lead, 43 to 39 at half time after Perth led at quarter time. It's been a game of momentum swings. We've seen the points flow. Some wonderful passages of play as we take a look at some of the highlights of the first half. Of course, Perth ending Melbourne's undefeated streak on Sunday. We're back a few days later. And thank God we are because these are two great teams going head to head. Some wonderful basketball being played in the opening half. Mark Alabakov. Yeah, and Naz Hillman, like tremendous response by her uh, after the first game, only having the seven points and then coming up big here in this first half. I like when the Boomers get ball reversal, so the ball changes sides of the floor um, in the half court. They've been able to find these openings in the paint where, where their bread is buttered. So they get high percentage looks either off the dribble um, or off a post feed. But then Perth, if you allow them to be able to play at that fast, high octane tempo, it, if you reverse engineer it, it generally comes off the back of both turnovers um, or maybe a, a not great shot selection that is a long rebound that they run off the back of. They've got 15 points off turnovers and 13 fast break points already. So we take a look at some of the uh, key stats to half time. What stands out to you? Well, you know, the game is tight and you know we said that the Perth Lynx were able to have the ascendancy, especially through, you know, let's say, from two to three minutes into the first quarter onwards um, up until the, the last portion of that quarter with the, the Boomers taking charge. But they're only two of 13 from the three-point line and we know that they shoot a whole lot better than this. So it, it's a cautionary tale for the Boomers. They've been able to keep their noses in front, but the clean looks for the Lynx haven't gone down so far, but you would expect that to start to turn. They've got to anticipate that and be prepared to defend it. And... Some key player stats as well to half time. If we take a look at uh, the Perth first and McDonald just continuing her rich, uh, rich vein of form with 13 points. Atwell's up to 10 as well. And for the Boomers, uh, Hillman with the 14 and Blitzars, particularly in that second quarter, really started to get herself involved and frolling as well, chipping in with six. Yeah, Blitzarf's hitting some big shots, but for me, the biggest one is um, Amy Atwell for the Lynx and Naz Hillman for the Boomers. So having far more of an offensive impact in this second uh, match in the series between the two teams. Atwell being able to get on the free throw line. So she's had six free throw attempts of which she's hit five, but then she's playing a whole lot more confidently in her three point shot um, you know, is a, a result of the confidence that she's playing with seeing the ball go through the hoop. But then you've got Naz Hillman. So seven points in the first game that they played, she's already doubled that, um, being able to play more like we've seen her, especially the round prior where she was player of the round. So a great tactical battle unfolding here over in Perth at halftime. It is the Boomers leading 43 to 39. A massive second half to come. We're going to take a short break and be back with you very soon. Ford dealers have backed sport in communities for nearly 100 years. And now, from the Boomers and Opals to Aussie Hoops, 
Your local Ford dealer is proud to support basketball. Because all dreams start somewhere. I'm Loz. I'm Izzy and we're here with Liz. In the 100 Christmas special, Santa's secrets will be exposed. My husband is well into his 70s and still working. I've also heard he's got a second family in Darwin. <laughs> the 100, Sunday at 7 on 9 and 9 now. Hello, Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. Be afraid, boys. The power has shifted. The girls are in charge. What the hell? What the hell? Surprise! The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on 9 now. Welcome back to the Bend at Basketball Centre in Perth, where the Melbourne Boomers have turned the tables in the second quarter to lead the Lynx by four at halftime after Perth led by five at quarter time and what has been an awesome contest to watch so far. Of course, Perth beating the Boomers on Sunday. Here we are a few days later with the Boomers trying to exact revenge and they have their noses in front at halftime. Jess Webster and Mark Alabakov with you. As uh, Mark, uh, let's uh, take a look back at the team of the round from round five because Airy McDonald uh, was in the mix for that, as well as Annalie Maley and two players who are again putting in another great performance tonight. But uh, some really handy names in the team of the round for round five. There is, and obviously the two that you're seeing tonight, so Aerie McDonald and Annalie Maley, goes without saying Aerie's an early MVP candidate for mine, and Annalie is a former MVP of the competition. Mercedes Russell is, is one of the best import po uh, post players that we've seen in the competition, not only this season, but then in her previous stint with the Southside Flyers, she's been able to, to hold 
involved in the elite level in our competition for a long time. Ali Wilson continues to come into her own. She seems to get better every year um, and is a, a real energizer bunny, adds a whole lot of scoring punch for the, the Bendigo spirit. But then the player of the round, Michaela Roof, she's a, a demon for rebounding the basketball. So 19 rebounds, that possession play is outstanding. It's a, a huge boon for your program if she can keep the ball alive for you, but then being able to put double digits uh, points on the board as well. So a couple of Lynx players uh, who performed well against the Boomers on Sunday. But to halftime here tonight, you want to take a look at Naz uh, Hillman, who is putting in a, a great performance so far. 14 points and five rebounds for her to halftime. And coming up big, so I keep re referring to the first hit out that these two teams had. She was two of seven from the field, only had the seven shot attempts, and the discrepancy between the teams was in scoring. So only 63 points put on the board. She's come up big to be able to lead the scoring charge for the Boomers. So 14 points so far. She's already had one more attempt up until halftime than she had in the entirety of the last game, but then delivering five rebounds as well. So this floor running from her shows her mobility. She's does a great job of being able to catch the ball overhead and ground her feet. And then it's this bullying post play that makes her tough to, to defend. When she gets a straight line drive, she can just find her way through contact and get to the basket and be able to finish, but then has that long two point range as well, which has been a little shaky for the whole Boomers lineup, but she's shown a proficiency to be able to knock it down as well. So to halftime, let's break it down, Mark. Perth by five at quarter time, Melbourne by four at halftime. We've seen a great tactical battle unfold. Perth are doing really well to, to force certain shot selection from the Boomers. It's been high octane stuff, which suit Perth, but Melbourne are in front to halftime. So <laughs> there's just so much to dissect here. What's stood out to you? And is there any evidence that you can see so far to halftime that thinks, OK, this side might actually win today? Well, as layman as it sounds, uh, and I used the same analogy in the first game, Perth, you know, their moment of uh, being able to wrestle ascendancy of the game is when they know who they are and they play to their identity. And for the Melbourne Boomers, their ability to weather any storms and wrestle back ascendancy in the game is when they know who they are and they're able to play to their identity as well. So we're getting this clash of styles uh, and this ever-present arm wrestle for do I want the ball to uh, be punched inside and be able to play um, out of the high post or low post, be able to compete for rebounds and lock the ball in close to the hoop, get on the free throw line as a result of it? Or if I'm Perth, I want to get it out and try and run as much as possible. And the three-point shot hasn't landed for them yet, but they've had clean looks at it. So if, if you're Perth, you're comfortable and you're thinking from a percentage standpoint, some of these are going to start to go down in this second half. It's almost like there's two sides would like to take something from the other side to help them win, if that makes sense. So per, uh, Melbourne getting a good look at some three balls, but Perth, it hasn't worked for them, and then vice versa. Sort of, you know, Melbourne want to get inside the paint as, as well as Perth are doing, and, and that's a, a great example to kick us off in this third quarter. Isn't sport great? <laughs> so a big second half to come. Margin now back to three, uh, back to two rather. Rochi off to Canada. Now to Froling. Here goes Canada. Kicks it back out. Now Rochi puts a shot up. Froling mops it up. And that's what she does. And you know, credit the Boomers for keeping the basketball moving. That's what I think they're going to need to do within the half court here to try and move some of those Perth defenders that are trying to pack the painted area, uh, get them in rotation and find some of the space to get the ball inside. Another early win here for the Melbourne Boomers. Fouls called against Potter, it looks like. Melbourne up by four. Rochi. Canada under pressure. Shot clock down to seven. They manufacture here from the corner off the rim. Long two, long rebound. Perth at pace. Potter gets the contact. Love to see her be able to gather her feet and then push evenly off both to be able to finish strong, almost landing her feet in the same position she takes off. She'll have more body control to be able to make that layup and then be able to take the foul as well. But fading away, she's lost her balance just a touch. And that shot rims out. Could have been a certain two points. It's the first. 
The challenge when you fade away, you do get separation, but you leak some, some of your power, and then you land in a, a position that's further from you know, where you could pursue an offensive rebound. Who's got the best fadeaway shot in the comp, do you think? Oof. Um, <laughs> Putting on the spot. It is. Uh, Kelsey Griffin. Rolling, working on Atwell. And giving away the foul. Just got to have some foul discipline. So if you're Emily Potter, so it looked like Frolling was under control. I thought Amy Atwell did a tremendous job being able to take a, a body blow through the sternum uh, and bump and get separated to try and keep in front of Frolling. And then here, Potter just rushes across, has her hands down, and that's a foul that she doesn't want, especially when she picked up one in you know, just the subsequent um, possession. That puts her up to three fouls now. Two from two for Frolling. Broom is now out to five. This is where they made their charge on Sunday. Had a great third quarter before Perth hit back. Atwell for three. Hey. Melbourne come up with it. Canada. Froling. Is again offline, but she gets it back. To Canada. And now Hillman for two. Adding more points to her tally up to 16 now. And they need it. You know, they're at 49 points already and we're early in the third quarter. They only had 63 in game one. They need to be able to score to go with the Perth Lynx. Rochi from the corner. Good defense. Chibatoni got a slight deflection on that. Down the other end. And well! That's a beautiful thing about the way that the Perth Lynx play. So it's a dead sprint vertically with great spacing. They force you to have to chase them in one direction and then they chain pass the ball around the three-point line until they find an open shooter. Rochi. Looking for blitz arms. They'll maintain possession. Keep an eye on Erin McDonald defensively. She's been really, really active off the ball. Um, nearly pounced on a, a long rebound. The one in the prior possession that Keely Froling got. Had she gotten hands to it, she would have had a wide open layup. And here she's hunting the steal. Watch her working the baseline. Blitz halves. Offline. Now win it back. One's again offline and Potter with the rebound. Nice pass. Lovely pass and Maley converts. Great team play from Perth. Maybe she was watching Jordan Canada's video at <laughs> halftime. Quality basketball on show tonight. One point the margin. Boomers with their noses in front. One of the things, if you watch Amy Atwell defensively, she doesn't get pinned behind people. So she does a really good job of staying light and loose, and she's able to maneuver her body where she can use her long wingspan to deflect passes that try to go inside. Canada. Reattempt. Bobbles out. Bailey. It's come unstuck for Perth. Fast break from Canada. Puts it up. Gets the contact. And this goes back to what I alluded to earlier and said that there's profit. Um, and it probably ties in actually with what you were saying, Jess, about almost stealing the good parts of the opponent's game plan. So where the Lynx want to play at tempo, and you could hear Coach Ryan Petrick screaming out, go, go, um, and try to run with a, a rate of knots uh, back the other way. If there's a missed shot or a turnover, if you get it and go as fast back in the opposite direction, the Lynx are pre-fatigued. So it, it becomes really challenging for them to try to keep up with you and not put themselves in a position to to foul like they have here and, and put Jordan Canada to the line. So there's an opportunity there if, if Melbourne wants to almost counter punch just as quickly back the other way. Matching fire with fire, perhaps. 
Three point lead to the Boomers. Halfway through this third quarter. Atwell. Triple. Bounces out. Just haven't quite found their three point range tonight, Perth. Blitz Arves. Long range two. Lovely finish. It's a big shot. Now they're starting to fall down where they didn't for parts of this game and certainly the first game. And then to the contrary, I mean, the Perth Lynx shot, the three point shot at nearly 40% in game one. There's a foul gets called there with uh, Maley going to the basket. But you know, we're talking about a game that's five points the difference. That's two possessions that can turn in 30 seconds if you're the Perth Lynx at the, the speed that they play with. But they're three of 15 from the three point line. Uh, you know, again, that wheel is going to turn, you would anticipate, uh, and you'd probably start to assess here at, you know, as we get into the latter stages of the third quarter, is there a need for you to be able to believe what the statistics say and you know, maybe Perth needs to pound the ball inside for a period of time um, to generate you know, some offense or put themselves in a, a spot where they can get on the free throw line just like this. from two from Maley. Four points is the Boomers lead. Canada with ball in hand off to Frolling. And a turnover. They've got to keep the basketball moving. That's far too long for Keely Frolling to have to hold the ball at the top of the key and wait for something to happen. So there's two choices that you have. You need to, if you're coach Chris Lucas, employ your athletes to get quicker into your cutting and screening action so that the advantage that you're seeking presents a whole lot earlier, or you need to change it because it takes too long to, to get to the advantage that you're trying to create. Montconti into the action for the Boomers, fresh off winning her sixth consecutive best and fairest in the AFLW's good child for three. Comes up short. And a Melbourne ball. Foul called on Maley in the rebounding contest. And she's crafty, Maley. She comes in underneath you and she sometimes can come and, and grab underneath your arm and, and she can get into this wrestle. And she's such a great athlete and has a great wingspan where if you're locked in almost like a, an AFL marking contest, she can still get her fingertips to the ball and knock it to her own advantage. Reed loses it. Clinch Hoycard to McDonald. The Lynx trying to manufacture something. Atwell working on Froling. Comes up short. Reed with the rebound. That's big from the Boomers. Maybe fatigue playing in, you know, is starting to become a little bit of a factor because you've got both of the teams. I mean, I just spoke about the Melbourne Boomers and the offense looking stalled. It's similar with the Perth Lynx. It's stopped moving or it moves to one side of the floor and it gets pinned there uh, and appears to be by choice as opposed to anything that the Melbourne Boomers are doing to try to lock the ball um, you know, towards the sideline. So perhaps fatigue starting to eke its way into this contest you know, with the gravity of the, the two teams knowing what this, this win would mean to their program. So four minutes to go here in the third quarter. It was the Lynx by five at quarter time. Melbourne by four at half time. Chibatonic from the corner. Can't get it to go. Hillman to Canada. Now to Reed. Canada. Shot clock down to 10. And the ball has stopped again. Kicks it out, throwing for a triple. That's a big shot. It is a big shot, and over a contested hand of Alex Chibatoni. So not the greatest offensive execution, but you know this is a, an example of the class of athletes that we have in these two programs. 
Haley converts down the other end. It's throwing still, you know, under all that duress, knocks down the big three, and then you get a, a quick basket by Maley at the other end. Seven points of difference. Three minutes to go on the third. Canada driving. And that's the first time, I think, in this game that she's been able to get all the way to the, the point of the rim. So what the Lynx have done a really good job of is forced Jordan Canada to have to shoot pull-up two-point shots and not get all the way to the basket. Now, the trouble with that last play is Mackenzie Clinch-Hoykard never got her body in the driving lane, so her feet in the road, essentially. So when you're even a step off that straight line, it's not enough. Jordan Canada's way too quick, and she's going to get there. Four from four at the line tonight for Canada. These are important shots coming up. This is a new game-high lead of nine points to the Boomers. Could extend. And if you're Perth, I mean, you'd succeeded so far in that matchup. So she's, like Jordan Canada, uh, only two of eight from the field. Uh, you know, it's had to really work for those baskets. Four of them have come from uh, the free throw line. Donald can't convert, but Potter can. Wasn't much that Monique Conti could do there against Potter, who's twice her size. Two and a half to play. Perth would love a stop here. Conti. Out to Hillman. Offline. You hear Ryan Petrie calling out push. So anything that's a long rebound, they get everybody to converge in the paint. Clean look at the three. Still doesn't go down. They need some of these to fall. Here's Rochi. Out to Conti. Decides to go for the three. It's offline. Not great shot selection by Monique Conti. I think she's got to know better there. You can create a bigger advantage through the possession. And if you're the Boomers, you want to not be in a hurry. Tough shot from Chibatoni. It's a massive, massive basket. They need this, and they need this free throw to go down as well, just to inch themselves closer. But I was saying with Monique Conti uh, and the last possession by the Boomers, you don't need to be in a hurry, so you want to chew some of the 24-second the shot clock and almost go into this three-quarter time break with as big a lead as possible that you've had to really arm wrestle for. So while you want a longer possession, that doesn't mean stopping the ball on one side. You've still got to keep the Perth defenders moving um, to try to dissuade them from being able to just pack the paint like they did in the first half when they went on that big run. And you're right, the game of momentum swings and, and it was a game-high margin. Just maybe just playing a bit of tempo was probably the right idea for Melbourne. Still a minute and a half to go to here in the third. Reed, that's another big shot. See, and that wasn't so bad. So the ball changed sides twice and then you're able to bait a, a defender um, to come and play dribble penetration, kick the ball out to Tara Reed, who you know, is the the best three-point shooter for the Melbourne Boomers, statistically speaking, in terms of percentages so far this season. Back out to an eight-point advantage. It's move versus counter-move. Potter to Chibatoni. Atwell loves it from here, but it's going to be a Melbourne ball. Offensive foul called there, I believe, on Mackenzie clinch Hoycard. Now, if you're a coach, you're prepared to wear that foul. So she's trying to obviously get in the road of um, Amy Rochi there to dislodge her from being able to chase Amy Atwell and give Atwell the open three-point look. Right idea, but illegal movement. Rolling steps back for the three. Off the rim. Fast break to Perth. Good child down the other end. And the fouls and calls. It's a Melbourne ball. Oh, so they called that as coming off Mila Goodchild. Oh, and out did. of bounds, yeah. So unlucky. Again, right endeavour. And a Perth ball. 
Now, probably lucky for Amy Atwell not to get a foul call because she did bring, I believe it was her left arm down to try to swipe at the ball and not allow Naz Hillman to, to get her shot away, but concurrently took the contact right down the, the middle of her chest here. So the referee deemed that the contact was made with the, the drop shoulder first, um, so that's where the, the foul took place uh, and it allowed Amy's foul thereafter to be off the hook. 30 seconds to play in the third. Eight points the difference. Hot up, making a move. And gets the foul. And we've seen her be able to comfortably go off the dribble a number of times, which, you know, I mean, she's a world-class basketballer, so it should come as no surprise. But certainly an athlete of six foot six height to have the confidence in her dribble and her dribble penetration game. There was a game, I believe, against the, the Bendigo Spirit where she took a rebound down one end and dribbled the ball the length of the floor and outran um, six foot six Ruth Davis and got on the end of a, a wide open layup. So she can certainly cover distance and she's comfortable dribbling the ball. Boomers, the last play of the third. Rochi. Sees your opportunity, makes the most of it. Is there one more bucket for McDonald's? Almost. Goodness gracious. And this contest is all set up for us at three quarter time. The Boomers have made their move. They lead 66 to 57, really broke it open and swung the momentum in their favor in that third quarter. But we know Perth are gonna come home strong, particularly in front of their home fans. So in three quarter time, Mark Alabakov. How do you sum up this game so far? So much has happened. We've seen like we've seen a bit of everything, haven't we? Well, it's ebbs and flows, right? And that goes without saying, and it's probably really layman to, to say that it's you know the the swings of momentum that have been able to steer this one and you know so far they're in the Melbourne Boomers favor but you know, for the Perth Lynx the commitment to being able to get the ball and run in transition they started to pull away from that and sometimes that's a, a confidence hit where you know the the Boomers have gone on a run they've been able to get themselves out to a bit of a lead and it, it changes um, you know your psyche and, and the aggressiveness in, in which that you play um, so they've got to try to reclaim who they are to be able to get back into this one but for the Melbourne Boomers Things are back on your terms. I mean, you'd be pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, they win the quarter 23 to 19, so it's still relatively close, but you've been able to pull away to a lead that gives you some breathing space. Um, you've got, uh, we've got five double-digit scorers for the Boomers already, knowing that you've got Jordan Canada, who's you know, such a match winner, only on the 10 points so far, but the scoring's being carried by Naz Hillman, Keely Froling, uh, Sarah Blitzarf's gotten into the game, but then Tara Reid, 10 points in 17 minutes has been huge. And sometimes after a game, you didn't want to drop, uh, like on Sunday, Melbourne, they were undefeated. They lost at home to Perth. Sometimes you really want to be able to play them again really quickly. And they've got their opportunity a few days later to head over to Perth and just try and uh, right the wrongs of Sunday. And, and uh, they, they would take a lot of confidence out of the way that they've been able to turn things around so far. But one quarter to go. And as we see between these two teams, anything can happen as we take a look at some of the top scorers and stats to three quarter time. It could literally go you know, either way. And again, and that goes without saying, but it's, it's such is the quality of these two basketball teams in this early part of the, the season. But I spent a couple of years as an assistant coach with uh, Coach Chris Lucas, and one of the words that was part of his mantra was response. Like, I want a response, or let's do this to have a response to the adversity that we've faced. So we've certainly seen a response from the Boomers. Perth gets an opportunity with one quarter left to play to respond to the way that this game is trending and try to get it back on their terms. So how important are these first few minutes of this last quarter for either side? Massive. Absolutely. And you know, usually you would isolate a couple of minutes, like this first two minutes are going to be really critical or the last four minutes is where you know winning time is played. But I really feel like the, the way that these two games, uh, these two teams, sorry, have played in the two games so far, we've watched you know, seven quarters of basketball. It's going to be the whole 10 minutes that you've got to show up for at both ends of the floor. And immediately, we've seen a foul called. 
Eight and points the way of the Boomers. There's a psych, uh, like a psychology to this and a, a you know, psychological resilience that you've got to have. So you, know, you come out, your very first possession, you've obviously just spent some time diagramming something up for an intended outcome. Get an offensive foul, so you lose first blood in that contest. If Perth can get a basket here, this will get them going. Here's McDonald. Atwell looking inside for Potter. Froling comes up with a rebound. Rochi looking for Reed. Now went into the corner for Froling just offline. Atwell back down the other end to McDonald. Canada got a hand in there. Good child's under pressure. And that's smart defending. So you've got a response here. You know, I talked about the Perth Lynx wanting to reclaim who they are, be able to push the basketball down the opposite direction. But then the Melbourne Boomers defenders closed out or were able to shut down the advantage by running through the passing lane. And you know, Perth does a great job of swinging the basketball to find open shooters. If you can play that passing lane, you can get a hand to it. Donald, it's a little slip to good child. Potter. Melbourne will come up with it. Confidence is such a big thing in sport. The first two possessions here for Emily Potter, so the catch and the missed layup, there I think she could have wheeled around onto her left hand on the first attempt. You know, the challenge becomes, can you get past the second guessing of yourself when things aren't always going to plan? Have a mental flush and be able to go fresh on the next possession. Canada. Rochi, shot clock down to seven. Now drives, and it rolls in. Tough basket, the Lynx need to get themselves a score here, just to steady. That margin out to 10 now. And they've lost it. So Melbourne ball. Melbourne with a huge opportunity here, if you see them get Another basket, perhaps maybe two. We're probably looking down the barrel of a, a Ryan Petrick timeout just to be able to settle his troops, maybe reformulate a game plan to be able to try and steer themselves back into a position to make this one a contest. Canada, wide open for the three. Doesn't go. Blitz arms with a rebound to Rochi. Cleans it up. A couple of massive baskets for Amy Rochi. So she's been able to pull out that floater that she you know, has made a career out of being able to hit. She hits the layup prior, hits the floater then. There was one in the first half that drew a bunch of defenders to defend. Uh, and then there was a rebound and put back from Keely Froling on the back of it. So I like her being aggressive off the dribble. It's, it's been fruitful and, and profitable for the Boomers. So 12 points the difference now it was Perth by five a quarter time, Melbourne by four at half time, by eight at three quarter time. So far holding their nerve. Hillman to the line. The game back on the boomers tempo. So then being able to steal essentially some of Perth's game plan and counter punch back the other way in transition, they've been able to get to the point of the rim for layups and spots where they've been fouled and been able to execute with free throws. Perth desperately needs a couple of buckets here. McDonald under pressure, shot clock down to seven. Need to get a shot up. Maley comes up short, but they get the rebound. But Canada has other ideas. Lovely pass to Rochi with a third bucket in a row. And timeout, smart timeout to the Perth Lynx, being able to try and stall some of the momentum, but Canada is lighting up. You can see she's gone to another level of energy and she's taking this, both that personal matchup with Ari McDonald, who probably got the better of her holistically in the first contest. She's come to play to try and even the ledger. 
This time out is brought to you by the WNBL. Don't forget the official WNBL app is here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. So for all the live scores, the highlights, your player and team info, and plenty more, download the WNBL app today, and it is free. So make sure you get your hands onto it. So timeout here in the last quarter. The Boomers 74 to 58 with seven minutes left on the clock and have really have done so well to get the match on their terms. We know the quality outfit that the Lynx are, Mark, but I've got to get a wriggle on because at the moment, the Melbourne are proving hard to crack. Absolutely, and they're doing a tremendous job. You know, the, the commitment to, as I alluded to before, just getting able, uh, their ability of, of running the basketball back in the opposite direction has alleviated some of the, the pressure of having the score in the half court. And then where they've been able to get on the free throw line, they, they weren't on the free throw line at all for the entirety of the first quarter and the game was on Perth's terms. Now where you see a change in tact where the ball moves with a reaction time advantage uh, in transition, but it's moving side to side. They've been on the free throw line for 17 attempts and they've made 14. McDonald trying to inspire a side. Gets the contact. Thirteen points for Ari McDonald so far tonight. Four from five at the line. Now the challenge or the response from the Perth Lynx with the margin being what it is, there's not going to be one sole athlete that is going to be the catalyst for the entirety of a comeback. So just, I mean, prior to this possession, we started to see leaking into their game uh, a series of individual efforts, which is not how they play, and it's not how they play best. Oh, that's a massive three-point from Blitz Arms. McDonald. Down the other end, can't find the bucket. 17 points now, the margin. She can go quick, but you've got to have teammates running down the floor with you. Canada to Hillman. Lovely execution. And this is the Boomers going to the well, right? Remembering who they are and playing to their identity. Atwell finds a clear passage. Breaks through two defenders' arms to get that straight line drive. Less than six minutes to go in the fourth. Can the Lynx get a run on? Or will Melbourne hold strong? Rochi. One comes up short. They hustle for it. The foul's called. I believe that'll be on McDonald. So had a collision there, I believe, with Keely Froling. Both of them hotly trying to contest the loose ball. Take another look. Yep. Two athletes that are desperate to do anything they can to try to win this game. What's well, gone the other way? So the, the foul charge to Keely Froling in that contest. So the referees deemed that Ari, uh, Ari, rather, McDonald got to the ball first. And that's an offensive rebound right back. A, a foul, rather. And just, you know, this is foul discipline stuff. They can't afford to be able to lose possessions through you know, controllable errors like this. Especially with the margin being what it is. The, the clock is their enemy right now. You know, one more foul and Emily Potter's out of the ball game. And they need her size both offensively but especially defensively to challenge shots at the rim. Canada. For Hillman, it's out of play. Now look for the Perth Lynx to go to what we coaches call quick hitting actions. So what that basically means is um, trying to get some um, pattern of play to be able to gain a quick advantage to try to get yourself something to the basket or force a defender to have to help and then kick the ball out for a three. 
McDonald working the baseline. Now out to Maley. They need this. Comes up short. But last touch to Melbourne, so Perth will come up with it. So that was as close enough an example. So there was a little bit more ball reversal involved in, in the play, but trying to get a quick shot, knowing that you need more possessions to make up this deficit. What up? Bobbles out. And then to the contrary, there's no rush for Jordan Canada. One of the things that Coach Chris Lucas does a really good job of in late game situations, as you see a massive three-point shot there by Keely Froling, he'll get the ball in the hands of the best playmaker in the team and get you know, as good playmakers and finishers involved in screening actions and just give them room to be able to operate. Seen a couple of big threes at key moments from the Boomers tonight. Like Perth had in game one. Absolutely, it's certainly has been a reversal and even a reversal from the first quarter when we wanted Melbourne to go fast and then now they're happy to right. <laughs> just go slow with a 20 point advantage up their sleeve. So a platoon sub here by coach Ryan Petrick. So it's five on five off. So essentially in a lot of ways, probably conceding the result. Um, slash looking to get a response. Um, if there was something from a strategy point of view that he was trying to, to gain out of the, the starting five. He's a good child. Clinch Hoy card. And the three attempt is offline. Canada. But a roll of the no a dice nonetheless. You might get a little energy spark and you might see something in you know, one of these athletes that doesn't generally play a whole lot um, that might appear usable to you in future. Rochi off the rim. Three and a half to go. Clinch card. The good child. Puts the shot up. Melbourne happy to take their time. What a turnaround it has been. In a game of polar opposites compared to game one. Do you think there's a way that we could lobby the league to get the third one in this series? Like <laughs> Sunday, perhaps? <laughs> I want to see how it plays out. How does the story finish? I guess in the context of the season, we've seen the two games between these two sides. Things, as we mentioned, are starting to tie up in that top four, tighten up in that top four. Do you, what, what have you, what have you learned, I think, as we see the three ball attempt that was just offline about these two teams in terms of their, their premiership credentials? Well, they have strengths that are able to build almost 20 point leads, uh, you know, if they can get the game on their terms, but then, you know, the, the fallibility of, of both of them as well. You know, and I know that has a, a negative connotation, but as a fan, it's exciting when any team can beat anybody. You know, there's an unpredictability in the, the competition, not a foregone conclusion that Team X is going to, to walk all the way up to the grand final and put two hands on the cup. But anyone can beat anyone in this competition. That's what we love about it. Here's Conti. Now Rotano. Oh, good hand in there from Conti. And gets a bucket. It's a crafty defender and has just tremendous impulse on the defensive end. She reads the game really, really well, Monique Conti. I mean, obviously that translates to everything she turns her hand to. I feel like she's a to be pretty good at anything that she picked up, regardless of the size of or shape of ball that she uses. She just won her fifth Tigers best and fairest yesterday or the day before. And she is, Conti, it was a sixth in a row. Across two clubs. Reed for three! Puts the exclamation mark on a fantastic second half from the Melbourne Boomers. You know, and I was critical of the shot selection by the Boomers, and I, I mentioned that 
the way to create space and create a little bit more momentum, because they're not terrible three-point shooters, this Melbourne team. But it was the selection of when, where and why that was a catalyst for low shooting percentages. So just that last play, Conti gets dribble penetration, kicks the ball over her shoulder, gets made an extra pass. They got a whole lot more time and space to be able to shoot comfortably. Davidson wants to get in on the action. She says, don't leave me out. And now the three attempt from Hannon. Bounces off the rim. Clinch Hoycard goes again. Draws the contact. Less than a minute to go here in this first quarter. Fourth quarter, Perth by five at quarter time. Since then, Melbourne really have earned this victory. Grace Foster, one of the development players out there in these final few minutes for Perth. Clint Hoycard. Now Jacobs puts it up. Can't get it to go. Conti. To read inside for Davidson. Conti with the rebound. They go again. Big three out there from Rotano. I think that is, it was. It is. That's her second three for the season, and she's still at 100%. So that'll do us an impressive victory from the Melbourne Boomers. Sweet revenge after their undefeated streak came to an end at the hands of Perth on Sunday. They head to the West and they get the job done, 93 to 62. A big victory in the end after what was a great arm wrestle in the first half. These two sides traded blows. We had momentum swings. We had some great shots, great individual performances, but all credit goes to Melbourne in that second half. Mark Alabakov, they really grinded out this victory and, and got a big margin in the end. Well, they did, and you know, it's exemplary of the, the quality of team that this Melbourne Boomers outfit is. So, you know, they've only got the one blemish on their Ross, uh, their their season win-loss record, I should say, um, so far. And that is obviously in the last game to this Perth Lynx. But a huge response by them, um, being able to reclaim who they are, that physical team that is able to get the ball inside and just create havoc with the, the power that they can play with in the paint and in the possession play, keeping the basketball alive. So in this contest alone, you know, they get 32 points in the paint, but then I liked the, the flexibility of the lineup to be able to get the ball and essentially run it back down the Perth Lynx's throat whenever they missed a, a shot or made a, an uncharacteristic error. They had 22 points off turnovers, which, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's not been many teams that's been able to out Perth Perth stylistically <laughs> absolutely and from the melbourne boomers point of view they had a a number of key performances tonight but i want to take a look at jordan canada's performance finished with the 10 points but had 12 assists and really played a, an important role for this boomers outfit tonight well, she was on triple double watch and you know the Perth Lynx did a, a terrific job of being able to to curb some of plan A which is her being able to get to the basket this move here on um, Mackenzie Clinch Hoycard was the only time that she was able to get a straight line to the basket unless it was in transition um, but they forced her to shoot a bunch of contested twos which was plan B they didn't always fall for her but that didn't stop her from impacting the game 12 assists got other people involved got the eight rebounds as well and four steals she was a thief out there so being able to fill up every column on the stat sheet absolutely so she finished with 10 points for tonight as we take a look at some of the highlights of the contest hillman as well she top scored for the boomers with 20 points as well as eight rebounds and particularly in that first half she was quite important frolling ended up with 16 always is important and 10 rebounds as well such an important presence for the boomers and for perth mcdonald again was was wonderful with 15 atwell had 15 as well and um Potter as well chipped in with, with 12, but uh, just a game of momentum swings and, and, and 
players bobbing up here and there. And we see that three from Blitz Arms. I felt Melbourne had some really important shots late, in including a couple of triples to, uh, to really get the match on their terms. But uh, it, it was impressive. They created better rhythm, the Melbourne Boomers, uh, when they went to that perimeter game. So in the first quarter, I was as critical of their shot selection as I was in game one. But then thereafter, the perimeter shooting came off the back of a post touch or getting the ball off dribble penetration into the keyway, forcing defenders to converge. And there's something to you know, being kicked the, the ball out on the three point line or even in that long two range if you're Naz Hillman and having a defender be three meters off you as opposed to only one meter. You've got a whole lot more time and space to be able to knock it down with confidence. And how important do you think it is for the Boomers? They, they finished that last quarter. They, they scored 27 points. So it was the biggest quarter of the game. To be able to finish out with 27 points. And yes, Perth put some of their, their bench players on late uh, to, to get some minutes into some more players. But that would also be really pleasing from the Melbourne coaching staff's perspective. Yeah, 27 to 4 in that last quarter was you know, nothing less than um, clinical. But for the Perth Lynx, you know, you, you ruin opportunity to potentially get two games uh, against this Melbourne. Melbourne Boomers outfit, but it's the shooting percentages that cost you, I believe. You know, three of 27 from the three point line for just the 11%, well, well uh, below their season average. So, you know, is that an outlier performance? Was some of that um, caused by the defense, by the, the Boomers, and adjusting to game one? It's probably a little from column A and a little from column B, but a chance now for the Lynx to have to go back and respond and, and be able to find solutions to some of these problems. So another twist in this season uh, tonight as we uh, see the victorious Melbourne Boomers just soaking up the atmosphere over there in Perth as we take a look at their next four games and uh, some key matchups there. The Capitals, Adelaide, uh, Southside Flyers and then Townsville. That's going to be a huge one, but a, a pretty good opportunity in the next four games to really uh, set themselves up. Well, they'll bring confidence. They'll uh, look at that next four games as having the opportunity to have a winning position, you know, in terms of when you look at ladder standings at the moment and certainly the, the way that they've come out and played tonight, that they should be able to get three out of those four. The big test coming when they go away to Townsville. So you play against the reigning champs, the top of the table team now. That'll be the big test of where they land, um, you know, as we see ourselves into Christmas. And the games to come in round six, as we mentioned this uh, season, just heating up a little bit, uh, a couple of weeks to go before Christmas. And uh, these are the games to come in round six. What one have you got your eye on there, Mark? Well, I mean, a number of them for different reasons. I'm keen to see Perth's response uh, out of the back of this game when they travel to Adelaide to play the Lightning, who've you know, been agonisingly close to getting a result themselves. So that's going to be a, a hotly contested one. Bendigo's on the back of a two-game win streak, and they get to play against Southside, who... I believe it's, it's one of the few times that they've played a top four team this season. So this will be a real test for them as well. And then, you know, the Capitals have been chippy and, and shown a, a capacity to push really good teams. They had an OT game against the Melbourne Boomers. They get two cracks at trying to secure themselves against, uh, secure themselves a result rather, against both Sydney and Townsville this round. So lots to come in round six. Lots to come for the remainder of the Signet WNBL season. Make sure you get to as many games as you can and support these wonderful athletes. Make sure you download the app so you never miss a minute of the action here tonight. It was the Melbourne Boomers who ran away with a big victory against Perth. On behalf of myself, Jess Webster, Mark Alabakov, great to have your insights tonight and our entire production team. We hope you enjoyed the contest. It is Melbourne by 31.